warning that's only for those of you who are interested in physics of movement. So here we have a, a drawing of a pelvis, right hip joint, femur, spine and the sacrum. Situation on standing on only on one leg, on the right leg. You can see that center of mass will run somewhere in the middle through the lumbar spine downward on the midline. Here we have the center of the hip joint, center of the femoral head. This is pulling us, gravity is pulling us down. We're standing on the one leg. Therefore, we have the situation of a seesaw with fulcrum being the hip joint and the center of mass being far away. So you can see, in order to counter this, if you wanted to balance this scale, you would need to have a tremendous amount of force pushing on the other hand of the seesaw in order for these two forces to equalize themselves and the pelvis to remain straight. In our situation, as the muscles that connect the outside of the pelvis were with your femur, these hard-working muscles contract and basically prevent the pelvis from tipping to the left, to the opposite side. Let's remove that muscle for now, since we are mostly concerned with vectors of force. You will see that that muscle will produce this kind of force downward. What we need to understand is what's called moment arm. It's the distance from the line of force to the center of rotation. This, is, this distance, let's call it D1, and it will be equal in our drawing to that distance. D1. Now, the other moment arm is from center of rotation hip joint to our gravity, to our body weight. This we'll call D2. That distance is much longer. This is this. Why is it important? Because here we talk about torques, rotational forces. So, what is the torque? When you're standing on one leg and you maintain balance, it means that one torque is balancing or equalizing the opposite torque. In other words, the force of body weight, force of body weight, this is this one, the green, times D2, the moment arm, they need to equal or be balanced by force of your muscles. Let's call it force of your muscles times, you got it, D1. When these two equalize, you're in a perfect balance. But that is that these forces also create the coupling of the, your mass, your weight, body weight, plus the enormous power of these muscles. That means that this hip joint will receive a tremendous joint reaction compressive force, which for the hip with arthrosis, osteoarthritis, with the fracture within the hip joint, that means a lot of suffering or, or inability to maintain weight-bearing, putting weight on the leg. So the joint reaction force then will be a force that goes in the opposite direction 
it will be the force applied to this joint in upward direction. So you have these two forces and then you will have joint reaction force that needs to equalize them. And that is why when you stand on one leg, you're putting three times your body weight on the hip joint. When walking, when running, with running five to seven times your body weight, jumping, when studies show that when person stumbled, uh, the transducers, the gauges that were implanted into the prosthe prosthetic hip uh, show 840% of body weight kind of force. That means a lot of pressure that goes into our hip joint. Now, how can we counter it? We can counter it by reducing D2 reducing that distance. How do you reduce distance of center of mass? By leaning, by dipping into the side. And that's why patients with osteoarthrosis spontaneously gravitate to waddling, to moving to the side, because in the brilliant way their brain is coping with the trouble by reducing D2. Imagine this spine now being not straight like that, but this spine is starting to lean to the side, which shifts center of mass from this place to perhaps little closer to the joint, creating the D2 moment arm shorter and therefore reducing the requirement for counterbalancing from the muscles, the force generated by muscles, and therefore reducing joint reaction forces, joint compressive forces. Are there any other ways than dipping leaning? Absolutely. We'll have that's why Feldenkrais method offers so many strategies for how to bring center of mass closer to the hip, closer to the injured hip, through positions of the head, uh, mobility, mobility of the ribcage and chest, shoulders. There's, there are so many places from where you can learn how to reduce the D2. Reduction of weight, of course, it's a no-brainer. If you lose some weight, the joint reaction forces applied to your hip will dramatically be reduced. So losing weight is a no-brainer. But also strategies in movement, improving your postures, walking gait pattern, and, and ability to navigate your whole system, skeletal system, in action is what we are going to discuss in our in our series